going to need those words for that second verse. Oh. Which one's that? Oh, the nothing that, no, I, I'm, I'm not terribly not familiar with that. Totally Here he comes. Word perfect. Just about, thank you. Richard, just for my benefit, what order are they in? So we're doing all people that on earth do drill first. Just that. I'm ashamed to say I might just Four not people. quite have the words. Oh. I couldn't see it, it's printed on the other side. There you are. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Just I don't like to have my phone on during the service at all, just in case some random alarm. Yeah. <laughs>
clearly been important to her, but we should remember that each of us, we might not have been through a coronation service, but each of us are anointed for service by God in the same way, not quite as formally, but with the Holy Spirit. And so I'm going to be linking that theme a little bit as we go through our service uh, today. And it's great, we've got uh, an augmented uh, music group as well. We've got Jeff as well as Martin and uh, Nicola and Stella singing. So we'll, and it's a mix of traditional and um, uh, more modern music as well. Um, I've picked one or two things from the coronation service, seem to be good to go back to that. And um, the opening was a psalm, one of these amazing poems from the Old Testament, 3,000 years old. A psalm of celebration of Jerusalem as God's city. Um, and that thinks about how God is present in society as well, not just in churches and temples. And uh, this was sung by the choir in those days. Uh, a lot of it, not much of the service was. And in spite of our fantastic a cappella rendering of And Can It Be uh, last week, uh, we're going to say this rather than uh, try and sing it. And we're going to use the traditional words as it is in the coronation. So um, perhaps we can stand uh, for this, if we can. And so we say, I was glad when they said unto me, we will go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand in thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity in itself. O oh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and plenteousness within thy palaces. So a prayer, I said, for the city, the city representing the nation. And we now are going to sing, and we're going to sing the only hymn that the Queen had in her entire coronation service. And you might know that it was very radical to suggest that ordinary people like us could sing rather than just posh choirs and things. So this is the Queen. Anyway, they went to the Queen, and the Queen said, yes, I absolutely want this hymn in the service. So we're going to sing it now as our opening hymn. Again, it's also based on a psalm. It's all people that on earth do dwell. Oh 
you please sit down? Before our young people go to um, their groups, um, just want to have a little bit of thought with them. And um, uh, there's a really rather good book which I bought for the church library. Um, it says a little bit about the Queen. And so the pictures we've got of the Queen coming up now. So there's the Queen uh, from this book, a uh, children's book. Uh, so some of the illustrations come from that. Now, what do we know about the Queen? Any of our younger people, particularly, or anybody else for that matter, any interesting facts? Because you've been learning you've been the quiz. Do, did we, do we have a winner for the quiz? I don't know. We, um, I think it was just a bit of fun, really, wasn't it? But I hope you. Who got them all right? No, but, oh, we think Nick at the back may have done, but anyway, somewhere. But, so, so, what do you know about the Queen, either from the quiz or anything else? What sort of things do we know about the Queen? Sorry? She's 96. Yes, okay, Queen's 96. It's a good start. That's a pretty good age, and from what she's doing as well, it's just fantastic, isn't it? She and David Ed and Attenborough, I just sit back and admire you know, what they're doing. Hope I'm anything like that. What else do we know about the Queen? She likes horses. Yes, anybody hear the Archbishop's thing with only good with all that and the horse thing and everything? That's brilliant. I'm not going to do that today. That was just fantastic. Um, sorry? She got a winner. Did she? Oh, you did. <laughs> she did, okay. That's right, I know. She was very sad not to be at Epsom, wasn't she there? Okay, so, I mean, let's go. The, the Queen's always been there, hasn't it? I mean, she, she's on the stamps and the coins. I've got some pictures of that. You know, for me... You know, she, she came to the throne four years before I was born. The Queen makes me feel young. It's really rather nice, that. Um, but she's always been there. You know, we, we've always seen her, haven't we? And um, the, probably the most of us know the Queen from her Christmas TV broadcasts. Um, and, uh, you know, so that, that's where we get to see the Queen more often. Or we did see her yesterday, didn't we? Some of us with a certain other famous character. Yeah, that was rather good. I'm going to go back to that. Well, that's rather fun. But um, so you know, we know of, we know her TV. Very few of us might have actually met the Queen um, in in person. Um, how many of us here took part in the Jubilee, the Silver Jubilee celebrations? Look at that. Quite a few of us still. And the 60, 60, um, whatever that is. What's that? Um, the gold is 50. 60 is diamond, isn't it? Who, who took the diamond? Yeah, a few more hands, maybe. Maybe some of our young people weren't even there for that. Um, but this year, she's been queen, as we know, for 70 years. Longer than any other British king or queen ever. Um, and although she was born into the royal family, she never thought she would be queen until her father became king. Before that, we've heard about her horses. The next picture, there we are. That's the queen on her, her pony. Um, and the, those are the little animals there as well that are rather special to her. Called... Gorgies, yes, that's right. And even before she became queen, she was helping her father. While the Second World War was happening, Prince Elizabeth, as she knew how scared many children must be, and we think of children in Ukraine at the moment, hearing all the, the war that's going on around them. So she gave her first talk in 1940, I think that was one of your questions, um, on BBC Children's Hour on the radio. And there she is uh, with her sister Margaret. And in that broadcast, even at that age, she was saying how she trusted God. And she thought that would help children to know that. And I suggested they also trust God. Now, when she gave her first TV message in 1952, televisions were a little bit smaller then, weren't they? A little bit smaller then. And the picture's only in black and white. And what she said in that time was, pray for me that God may give me the wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making, that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. And over the years, she said a lot about her faith in God. In 2015, she said this, billions of people around the world follow Christ's teachings. I am one of them. In 2011, she said this, which I thought was rather interesting. God sent into the world, not a philosopher or a general, she said they have their place, but a saviour with a power to forgive. And it's interesting that that theme of forgiveness has come up a bit this year. And then in 2012 she said that Christmas is the time of year when we remember God sent his only son not to be served, but to serve. And again, that's very much in her thinking. 
And then in 2014, she said this, that Jesus' life was an inspiration and an anchor. And we'll be thinking a little bit more about this later in the service. And at the coronation, the Queen was given lots of special things, wasn't she? She was given the crown jewels to wear and a scepter and things like that. Um, that's all these things that she was given. Apparently that crown weighs it was four and a half pound, which I'm not sure in old money and imperial, I'm confused about all that and things, but it's several bags of sugar, I think, on your head, if you can imagine that. It's pretty heavy. But at one point in the service, she was given something else. What's that? The Bible. That's described as the most valuable thing that this world affords. And the Queen has gone to church pretty much every Sunday through her life and you know she has clearly read the Bible and this is the prayer that was associated when the Bible went was given this is the prayer from the service it was to so that she had a reminder of the teaching of Jesus and God in that now I think we probably know if you ever met the Queen what would you call her what how would you refer to her Ah, there is ma'am, and you've got to pronounce that carefully, haven't you? But her title is Your Majesty, isn't it? You might have to say Your Majesty, and then it would be ma'am or ma'am or whatever, however you pronounce that. Um, but the Queen herself, the most important people in the country, the most person in the country, there is one person she calls Your Majesty. And that's God. The God that we worship here this morning. So we're going to think a little bit more about how the Queen has expressed her faith and what we can learn from that later in the service. So we're now going to sing again as our children leave for their group. I'm not sure this one will be quite so much as the Queen's taste. She is quite a traditionalist. Um, but she would count herself as one of the people of our risen King, which is the title of our next song. So if our young people would like to, uh, to go out uh, with Rachel, is over there. And uh, yep, yeah, anybody else heading out there? Great. Yeah, one or two going elsewhere. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Martin. Shifting shadows of the earth, he will lift 
please do sit down. Two prayers, two colics for today. The first for Pentecost and the second for the Jubilee. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love. And renew the face of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the reign of your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and for the example of loving and faithful service which she has shown among us. Help us to follow her example of dedication and to commit our lives to you and to one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Yanni is going to come to uh, give us our first reading now. The first reading is from uh, Proverbs chapter 8, from 1 to 16. Wisdom's call. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights asking along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gates leading into the city, at the entrances, she cries aloud, To you, O man, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, gain understanding. Listen, for I have worthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. For my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are faultless to those who have knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have understanding and power. By me, kings reign, and rulers make laws that are just. By me, princes govern, and all nobles who rule on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Do you want a second read? No, well, there's something, one or two things before I invite you back. Okay. Get your breath. Thank you. It's one of the readings chosen by the Church of England suggested for this service, and that almost the last thing that was said, by me kings reign, and rulers issues decrees that are just. We know that many rulers around the world aren't just. They are as fallible as anyone, and sadly, some of them seem rather worse than most. But like everyone, God is there to give wisdom to all those who call on him, who come to him, as the Queen genuinely seems to have prayed for regularly, and asking for our prayers. She's often asked us to pray for her, that God will guide. So I think that passage would be one that would be special to her. We're now going to use something else. It is one of the more traditional elements of the service. We don't always use it, but we're going to use it this morning on a Sunday morning with the Gloria. And in it, we praise the one who above all we hold up as your majesty, our heavenly king. So again, if you'd like to and are able to, please do stand to join with me in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to
Please do sit down. So the second reading is from the Epistle of the Romans, and that is uh, chapter 12, 9 to 17, and 13, 1 to 5. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need and practice hospitality. Persecute those, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for any, anyone, evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. And everybody, everybody must submit himself to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is the word of the Lord. So that passage from uh, St. Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome, written just a few years after Jesus uh, lived, quite controversial but it says quite clearly that living in peaceful cooperative societies is the way God has set things up the way that we should be but just how much should we obey as it says in that uh, that chapter where should that end if God, rulers clearly aren't going God's way and I put those two passages together because we sometimes forget that Romans 13 follows Romans 12 now that sounds a bit strange. If you're reading the Bible, that's what it does. You know, it just you know it's chapter thir- twelve, chapter thirteen. But originally, people didn't have whole Bibles. Uh, they had either scrolls or sort of early books. But there were no chapters. There were no verses. It simply flowed on the argument from one to another. So before we are called to obedience to our rulers, they too are called. They're called to love sincerely, to hate all that is evil. These things that were in that chapter 12, they're called to be devoted to us, those they serve, as well as to God, to honor us, to serve us as they serve the Lord. The rulers too are called to be faithful in prayer, to help those in need. And they, like us, are called to bless and not to curse, not to be proud or conceited. I wonder if that interaction with Paddington Bear is just a little example of the Queen not being too proud or conceited, I don't know. But more importantly, 
at the end, those last couple of verses, rulers are called not to repay anyone evil for evil. They're called to do what is right and to live at peace with everyone. There's a lot more that could be said about that passage today, isn't there? Tell you to do that, but that's the context of our obedience to our rulers. And when we come to the Queen, you know, she has testified time and again, as we saw a moment ago, that it is Jesus' teaching that's inspired her, that shaped her life. Um, Jesus' example, and also Jesus' power that's enabled her to do the job. And I wonder if we can learn a little from her example of the, the way she brings faith into her public life and statements because the Queen has been doing quite a lot of what we were thinking about during our Lent series of living his story, bringing her faith naturally into her Monday to Saturday life. Admittedly rather different from yours and mine, but she's done it in her own way. And almost every time the Queen speaks of her faith, she relates it directly to Jesus. And so a few more quotes from, um, uh, from her Christmas messages about the bedrock, inspiration and anchor. We looked at that a moment ago. And a compelling example. The teachings of Christ, she says, have served as my inner light. She sees in Jesus not only a teacher, though, which she does, who revealed to us the truth in his teaching, but someone who lived by what he believed. At Christmas 1981, she said this, this was the reason, she said, for celebrating Jesus' birth. It's the significance of his life and his death. Now, she may not use the language of, of salvation and commitment, um, but that would be, I think, difficult for someone who has a role for people of many faiths and none. And she's really, I think people have acknowledged, have done a, a good job at drawing people of different beliefs and faiths together. But she does talk a lot about Jesus who actually is shared, uh, an admiration for Jesus is shared by people of many faiths. And his example of servant leadership is what she uh, highlights, as I said, you know, again, the quote here, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, should be devoted to the service. Again, the promise that we heard earlier. And I believe that actually she's, she's taken to heart the message of Romans 12 as well as Romans 13. I think she has sought the wisdom as expressed in that passage from the Old Testament from the book of Proverbs because she believed it's God who has called her to her role, not just her birth into the royal family. And I think the two things that seem to govern the Queen's vision for citizenship are the service and love of neighbour and uh, several times she's used the parable of the Good Samaritan. That seems to be her favorite passage. Um, in 2004, she focused on the issue of race, which actually is a big theme in that parable. She pointed out that the victim of the mugging in that parable was ignored by his own countrymen and helped by a foreigner. And a despised foreigner at that, as the story says. And over the years, she's criticised things like materialism, disability, spoken out on disability and wrong attitudes to that, on child poverty, called for greater equality and opportunity for women as early as 1966, and highlighted the need to care for the planet way back in 1989. And she tied all those things to this love of your neighbour. She's very aware that to love one another as I have loved you, which are Jesus' words, isn't the suggestion of a guru, a teacher, but a divine command. And she also says this, it sounds so simple, yet it proves so hard to obey. I think we could echo those words, couldn't we? Trying to follow Jesus' example ourselves. And then she also said this, and I, didn't, I haven't found this before the research for this sermon, about my own accountability before God. She holds herself up to God's standard, which I think is really interesting. Now we know that the Queen is the head of the Church of England. She's a regular worshipper. Most Sundays she's in church. She clearly gets a lot out of worship and sees the value of prayer. You know, she hasn't, she's never used her, her platform to encourage people to go to church. But she does say this in 1993. She referred to those who do actually acknowledge 
Jesus in this way. This is their message of hope. This is our message of hope. That's what she said. And she went on. For all the inhumanity around us, she said, let us be grateful for those who have received him and who go about quietly doing their work in his will without thought of recognition. They know there is an eternal truth of much greater significance embodied by the child in the manger. Again, this is their message of hope. That's what it says there. And that's a real affirmation for those of us who do try to follow Jesus as she does. And it's interesting that looking at this, again, she's mentioned Jesus more and more often, more recently from the 1990s and much more to the fore from the millennium on. In um, about three quarters of the addresses between 2000 and today, she's talked of her faith. She's talked about prayer. She talked about how Jesus inspires her. She says, I believe. She's talked much more. Uh, almost sort of testimonial. Uh, that thing you know, of giving her personal feeling, her personal gratitude for Jesus and the difference he makes in her life. And I wonder if this shows two things. I think it, I think it might show, and this is speculation, but I think it might show a growing more personal faith that it's not just a formal thing. And perhaps also alongside a realisation that we can no longer take for the country as granted as Christian in a way that she could have done perhaps in 1952. I, I don't know, I just wonder about that. And of course there's a lot we don't know about the Queen's faith and she's a very private individual. But what we can see, what the evidence there is that it's prayerful, it's biblical and it's Jesus-centred. And it's given her the model for living for over 70 years. And she's credited Jesus, whose servant heart and servant example she sought to emulate. And that, I think, as we celebrate a life of service, it's something, again, to think about as an example to follow. to have a creed, a version of the creed now, if you'd like to uh, join in with this. And it's one of these question and answer forms. Um, and it looks at God as Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, God we believe, working uh, in us. And I'm going to ask you the questions. If you'd like to stand um, to respond, then please do that. So, no, I'm not going to ask the questions. It's the other sort. I've tried a different one. We're going to declare our faith in God together, which is a good thing to do. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing again, please, musicians. Look and see. Thank you. Live up your 
Do please sit down. As I said earlier, today is Pentecost Sunday and we'll be thinking more about the Holy Spirit in detail next week. But for now, just a few verses from that story of the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. There weren't that many more on the day of Pentecost than are gathered in this building here this morning, just a few more. And they were anointed in this dramatic way with the Holy Spirit. The Queen was anointed, I said, with oil on her forehead. But God has anointed each of us with his Holy Spirit for service, for mission. And his people are not anointed just for the day of Pentecost, but the whole of the book of Acts. And often the, what the, we call the Acts of the Apostles, people say, well, that really should be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because it was the Holy Spirit working on God's church then, as we believe he works on our church today. We're anointed for service in every generation just before the Queen was enthroned, the Archbishop used this prayer. God crown you with a crown of glory and righteousness, that having a right faith and manifold fruit of good works, you may obtain the crown of an everlasting kingdom by the gift of him whose kingdom endures forever. just as we don't have to be a king or a queen to be anointed, nor do we have to be a king or a queen to obtain this crown that is described in that prayer, the crown of an everlasting kingdom. That's the gift of God himself. And we've been thinking about God as sort of majesty and as the queen, but also we come to God as father. And we're now going to turn to prayers. And I'm going to ask Pauline and Peter to come up and lead us in our prayers, talking to our heavenly father, praying to him, asking that he will strengthen us for whatever service he calls us to today. Thank you. Thank you. There's a, a response for the prayers. At, the each, uh, at the end of each prayer we'll say, Lord, your spirit is with us, and that you, the response is, hear our prayer. Lord, your spirit is with us, hear our prayer. On this Pentecost Sunday, and as we celebrate our Queen's Platinum Jubilee, we thank you, Father, for sending your Holy Spirit to guide and strengthen us, to help us to understand your word, the Bible, and to serve and love the Lord Jesus. Lord, your spirit is with us, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our nation and for our Queen and all who serve under her, that you will bring us closer to you in a desire for peace and unity and an acknowledgement that all authority comes from you. We pray especially for those in the Queen's government, that they may act with integrity and the best interests of all at heart. Lord, your spirit is with us. Hear our prayer. Teach us and all people to look for satisfaction in serving you and others rather than our own selfish interests. We thank you that our Queen has modelled this for us for 70 years. Give us wisdom as we move forward with new vision. Lord, your spirit is with us. Hear our prayer. Grant us, Lord, in our own lives the fruit of your spirit. May your life in ours show itself in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May we live each day in the power of your Holy Spirit 
to your praise and glory. Lord, your spirit is with us. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father God, we thank you that you care for every person. And we pray for those who are suffering today because of war and famine. We pray also for the sick, especially remembering today David Gale, a past member of this church who's had a massive stroke. And we pray for those who care for the sick. We pray for all in need. And we thank you for those who are working to relieve their distress. Lord, your spirit is with us. Hear our prayer. O oh God, bless all members of the Commonwealth of Nations, bound together under our Queen. Help us always to take seriously our great responsibilities and set before us an example of integrity and justice, faith, courage, duty, self-discipline and fairness, that we may foster the peace and goodwill that gives you alone the glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, your spirit is with us. Hear our prayer. Let's say together the words that should appear on the screen. Lord of our lives and Father of all, let our thanksgiving prove itself in service to you and to our Queen, our country and one another for your name's sake. Amen. And we continue as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as we come towards the end of our service, we sing our next hymn, which is another traditional one. It picks up some of the imagery with which we started our service, sort of Holy Zion, um, thinking of not just the earthly Jerusalem, and we do pray for the peace of that city, but God's own city, his own kingdom. And as we sing it, I don't know, but some words in verse 3 uh, struck me. Grant, we pray, to all your faithful, all the gifts they ask to gain. And we thought about that just the other week at our, our annual uh, church meeting. We need all the gifts and all the fruit of the Spirit to carry out our commission, our anointing, the work that we've been anointed for. So let's stand to sing. Christ is made the sure foundation. Christ the head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious, binding all the church in one. Oh, uh -huh. 
and your fullest benediction speak within these walls standing for a Pentecost response to end our service. As we wait in silence, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us with your spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your spirit as we long for your equipping fill us with your spirit as we long for your empowering fill us with your spirit may the spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives amen may the spirit who overshadowed the virgin when the eternal son came among us make you joyful in the service of the lord Amen. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. So filled with the Spirit's power, let's go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So as we remain standing, we have two verses of the National Anthem to sing together. God save our gracious Queen, Lord live our noble Queen, God save the Queen.
you'd like to sit down for a moment, Jeff's going to play a little bit more music if you want to sit and listen to that uh, and just to reflect on a few things, that would be great. Um, we don't have